Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about some of the treatment guidelines. And we, you mentioned steroids um, but, and possibly their, some of their uses, but I think equally important are when are there cases that maybe steroids shouldn't be used. Steroids uh, are right now the most effective uh, tool we have uh, for treating FOP. Uh, it's interesting because as we look at the gene discovery, we can look towards the future. We can go to the mountaintop. Uh, I often say that the gene discovery was like the Mount Everest of, uh, uh, it's like the Mount Everest of this field because from that vantage point, from that summit, we can see further than ever before. And so Dr. Shore, especially in the laboratory, can see now from that discovery that she and colleagues have made in the laboratory where we need to go to block this renegade gene. Unfortunately, we're still left uh, somewhat in the Middle Ages where we're using drugs that we've always used to slow it down. Uh, eventually, those drugs may, may uh, fall by the wayside or become used less uh, prominently. But right now, steroids are key, uh, and if they're used early, uh, within the first 24 hours of a new flare-up, of a new FOP attack, they can quiet the immune system down so that the immune system does not destroy the muscle uh, completely. If we can do that, if the patient can take steroids uh, and do that, um, we may be able to, to abort uh, an FOP flare-up uh, or make it less severe or certainly slow it down. So uh, steroids should be used at the earliest sign of a major flare-up that affects a major joint. We tend not to use steroids for flare-ups that involve the neck and the back, not because they're not effective. I think they are effective for those types of flare-ups. The problem is it's difficult to time them. When do they start? Right. Uh, they often, one flare-up often morphs into another. Um, as you know, uh, a flare-up may occur one day in one spot, and then it seems to move to another spot. Is that really a new flare-up, or is it just the edema from the one flare-up moving to another spot? So if we were to use steroids for every little swelling that a child has, we would use steroids constantly. That would suppress the immune system and cause irreversible harm. So again, it's not because they don't work. It's because they may be too dangerous. But we tend to use steroids most effectively for early flare-ups that involve uh, a ma the movement of a major new joint. And I know one of the things that you said was key is, is that the steroids be given early. And a lesson that we learned is uh, we carry one in each of our cars and in my purse. And so if there is a fall or is an injury um, that does affect one of those major joints, we try and give it to Carly as soon as possible. Yeah, I think that, I think you're absolutely right. And I think that pill in the pocket approach is a very good approach. I tell, I tell families, uh, very often, you know, here is a prescription for the prednisone or I will write to your physician and have them, ask them to prescribe it or give them the treatment guidelines so their physicians can actually see what we're recommending in terms of dosages. Uh, and I tell them it's like a fire extinguisher. Uh, you may not need it, but it's important to have around. Uh, and it's important to have in the kitchen. If there's a little fire, uh, you want to use the fire extinguisher to put the little fire out before it becomes a big fire because by the time the fire department gets there, it may be too late. And, and part of our goal in the research that we're doing in the lab is to understand that process so that even if the FOP takes you to the top of the hill, we can keep you from going over the top and, and keep, keep uh, the disease mm -hmm. subsided. What other treatment considerations should be thought about? Well, right now, uh, prevention is, is the key. Um, much of the time that I spend with families and that my colleagues around the world who see FOP patients, uh, most of the time that they spend with families is to instruct them about uh, prevention of problems. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, as, as someone once said, uh, it, it's, well, as, as we often say, it's a lot easier to prevent a problem than, than to treat it. And uh, when prevention is done absolutely right, absolutely nothing happens. Uh, and so it's like what what Dr. Shore was just saying, you know, if we can, since we know that injuries trigger inflammation and inflammation will push you over the top of that hill, uh, it's best to stay at the bottom of the hill. Things that can be done, for example, uh, anti-inflammatory medications. Uh, we don't have any direct evidence in FOP, but in other conditions of heterotopic or extra bone formation where bone forms where it shouldn't, uh, anti-inflammatory medications seem to play an important preventative role. Again, it's addressing the, the question of the immune system. This may be a common theme in all, in all forms of heterotopic ossification, whether it's genetically based as an FOP or in other types of heterotopic bone formation, uh, for example, that's secondary to athletic injuries that many people have, 
or war wounds, our, our, our veterans are coming back from Iraq with, uh, with war wounds and heterotopic bone, or head injuries from uh, strokes or spinal cord injuries. These all may have an inflammatory component. So the chronic use of anti-inflammatory medications may make it more difficult to get over that hill that, that Eileen was talking about. Uh, it's difficult, for example, to place children, young children, on high doses of anti-inflammatory right. medications for long periods of time, again, because of side effects. But, but theoretically and hypothetically in animal models, if that could be done, it would be more difficult to trigger an FOP flare-up. Uh, again, we have some, uh, uh, there's evidence now from ours and other labs that that, in fact, is likely true. So these are things that might be used, drugs that might be used, medications that could be considered. Again, they have to be considered on an individual basis for each, for each, indi for each person. Anti-inflammatory medications like ibuprofen, indomethacin, et cetera. Um, other, other classes of medication to keep the immune system quiet. Mm -hmm. Very practical things, however, though, um, in seeing a young child and seeing a, uh, a toddler, for example, it might be helpful for parents to redirect the child to activities that are less interactive, that are going to mm -hmm. less likely be able to, uh, where the child will less likely be able to be hurt. So, for example, a child doesn't necessarily have to be so play soccer. They could be the scorekeeper in the soccer game and be integrated into the, um, you know, into the social fabric of, of, of the children's play just as, just as effectively and mm -hmm. make them feel and, uh, important. And they are important to the team effort. Those are important lessons. Psychological lessons like that, I think, are very important. Uh, very practical things, uh, for example, uh, um, special bicycles that the children can ride that's, that are less likely to tip over. We don't want to steal childhood from the children, Absolutely. And, which we think is very, very important. You know, FOP is a cruel enough medical condition that we, we don't need to make it socially and emotionally more difficult. And I think it's very, very important that we allow children to develop. We allow them to develop the social skills, the interactions with other children uh, that are so critical to, uh, to, to childhood. Play is very important in children, and we don't want to take that away from any child, especially a child who has FOP. Simple things like wearing helmets, but they don't have to be uh, terrible-looking helmets. They can, they can be mm -hmm. great-looking helmets. They can have decals on them, and their brothers and sisters and friends can wear them too, uh, and they can, be, they can be heroes among their own crowds so, uh, and their own peers. So th th those are things we emphasize, and I think it's, it's, it's changing the outlook that FOP is not, it's not just a problem but it can actually also be used as a tool to help children develop rather the, because they have the condition rather than making them a pariah in their own communities.